This is Dr. Liz, Senior Pastor at Antioch International Church, and I would like to personally welcome you to Network for Encouragement. We are so glad that you have joined us today, and we hope that you are inspired and encouraged during our time together. And now, here is our host, Mr. Cyril Prabhu, the founder of Proverbs 226. Good morning, Anson. This is so nice to come back one more time uh, this morning as we are talking uh, with the Dr. Les coming and um, talking to us about this book, Are You Dancing in the Rain? I'm so excited to hear uh, what God's going to do uh, through this word um, and uh, some of the things that, uh, you know, we've been doing um, with the, the, the Proverbs 2 to 6, we'll come and give you an update as well. But in the meantime, you know, I want to welcome Dr. Liz um, to talk to us this morning about quitting is not an option, that she, even God hasn't quit on us. So let's listen to Dr. Liz. Good morning. I am so glad that you chose to be here with us today. It is such an honor and to a privilege, and I look forward to the day where I'm not just looking at a screen, and you're not just looking at a screen, but where we get to see each other face to face, and I get to just bless you face to face in the name of the Lord. Well, we are working on going through this book, Are You Dancing in the Rain, by our very beloved Cyril Prabhu, and we are on chapter five. Today's title is Don't Give Up, God hasn't. Now that we are in chapter five, we should all be proficient dancers. So how appropriate it is that this chapter is called quitting is not an option. I say that to my kids sometimes when they're just having a rough moment, having a rough day, and they just want to say, fine, I'm not going to do it. And I'm like, quitting is not an option. Here are your options. And, and that's the same in life. That's the same in in the choices that we make we have lots of choices but quitting isn't one of them cyril dedicated this chapter to all of those like himself who were infected with polio but strive to make a difference in spite of the obstacles we all have a lot of obstacles in life but there are those among us who have different challenges because of physical things in their bodies and and there is such a a respect that I have for those who, instead of sinking and saying, well, I'm just a victim and I can't do anything, they take hold of their challenge and said, I will get stronger because of this. I will reach more people because of this. I will depend on God because of this. And it makes them even greater and stronger. And so I have a lot of honor and respect for those who, who champion even through their difficulties. So Cyril begins, by sharing that when he was only six months old, he got very sick and that sickness led to polio. He shared his story about going to the hospital every day with either his mom or his uncle John for physiotherapy. In this chapter, Cyril shares with us the life-saving nuggets that he learned from his uncle John. So this chapter is specifically about his relationship with his Uncle John and him wanting to honor what he learned from his Uncle John. He learned survival mechanisms. Cyril didn't just learn to survive and fend for himself. He learned to survive and take care of family. And that's where this is a huge difference to what we hear so often in our culture. We hear about taking care. You got to take care of yourself. You know, if you're on a, a plane and the oxygen mask comes down, you put it on yourself before you put it on your child. And there's truth in that. And that makes sense. But in life in general, if we just survive to take care of me, we're going to miss it. But when we receive this dance lesson, this nugget of, yes, survive, don't quit, don't give up. But in the midst of it, to take care of those around you, to take care of your family, there's gold in that. Because actually, we become stronger and better people when we're taking care of others. And we, we kind of have to put our own 
stuff to the side, you know, as moms, we have, you, you might not feel good. You know, if a dad is sick, he takes the day off, he goes to bed. If a mom is sick, she just takes some extra vitamins, make, drink some more hot tea, and she has to still be mom. She has to still make sure the kids get off to school, the kids get fed, the diapers get changed, all of these things. And so there isn't just survival, but there's survival while caring for those around us, taking care of our family. Our, our culture likes to breed selfish, self-centered thinking, like look out for number one. But that's not how God created us. And that's why it never sits well in people when they're trying to convince themselves that they just, and family's not that important, they just have to look out for, for me. That never sits well. People can say that, but when they're honest with themselves, it never sits well deep inside of them because they know, because they were created for community and for family. And so when we take the selfish road and we don't take care of our family, it doesn't sit well inside of us. So it's important that we take care of ourselves so that we can be the best for our family. But making sacrifice for our family is so valuable. As Cyril grew up, he benefited from Uncle John's love, care, and sacrifice, and his sheer tenacity to never give up. On page 68, he says, Cyril tells, he tells on himself a little bit here. He, he just exposes some pieces of his life here. And he tells on himself and he shares on how he failed science in the 10th grade. Now, that's a big deal here in the United States, but in India, that's an even bigger deal because in 10th grade, that's when they decide whether you will no longer be in school, whether maybe you'll go to trade school or whether you can go on to post-secondary education and get a university degree and have that kind of career. Those things are decided in your 10th grade. So if you fail, most likely you will not be continuing in education, at least formal education. And so that really determines your future. Uh, in a, it's not that it's impossible, but it makes it very, very, very difficult to change your stars at that point. And Cyril's Uncle John knew that. And so he decided that Cyril is smart enough. He is capable enough. He just had a rough year, made some bad decisions, and he needs to try harder. So Cyril's uncle went to the principal and to the administration, and he was determined that I'm going to get my nephew back in school. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them to give him a second chance. And that's exactly what he did. He met with the principals. He shared about how smart Cyril is, how amazing he is, and just the, the rough patch that he was in. But with determination, Cyril could do it and he could not just survive in school, not just pass, but he would actually thrive and they could be proud of giving him a second chance. So this is part in, in Cyril's life where he learned this from his uncle that quitting is not an option. This is when this came out to play. Uncle John knew that Cyril had the ability and the capability, so he fought on his behalf for higher education. Now, on page 69, Cyril asks this question. He says, have you ever fought desperately for something as if you had no other options? That's exactly what my uncle did for me that day. What if we did this for our faith? What if we decided that quitting isn't an option, giving up isn't an option, and we are going to fight for our faith? We are going to fight for our relationship with the Lord no matter what. What if we did that for our relationship with the Lord like Cyril's uncle did it for his opportunity for education? What if we decided no matter what, I'm all in? I have no other option for life but to serve the Lord, to love God, to love his people. God loves us so much that for him, quitting isn't an option. He doesn't quit on us. He doesn't give up on us. He continues to love us and to call us to himself. 
On page 70, Cyril says, What Uncle John taught me that day was to never quit, even when you are down and out. His confidence in me caused me to become extremely competitive when it came to my schoolwork. As a result, I finished in the top percentile in science. He not only did well in science, but he continued for two more years to focus on science. What if our understanding of God's great love caused us to be like this, to be competitive with ourselves, with loving God more, with serving God more? What if our love for him caused us to be like this, towards pursuing our relationship with him? Striving for a great education is really important, but working towards a solid relationship with the God who made us Nothing compares to that. I love what Cyril writes lower on page 70. He says, talk about rewriting the chapter of one's life. So because he failed science, the chapter was heading towards no more school and find a way to, to get an income and to, to survive. That's what the chapter was looking like. We all consistently make choices in life. Some help us write our stories better but each story can be rewritten several times over the course of our journey. I love that Cyril brings this in here because with God, all things are possible and he desires every day for us to come into his presence and say, okay, God, what would you write for me today? This is possible because God loves us so much. He sent his son to redeem us and desires to restore us. From Uncle John, Cyril learned the oh so important dance move, never quit, never give up. Cyril's Uncle John persevered and refused to give up on him. We have someone even greater than Uncle John. We have Father God who loves us and will not give up on us every day is a new day to start fresh, to be redeemed, and to be restored. This week, I heard this, this song. It was new to me. It's called God You Are, and it's by Phil Wickham and Kyle Williams and Darren Mulligan. And I was listening to it as um, around the time when I was rereading this chapter and preparing, and it just really stuck out to me and I wanted to share some of the words with you today. In the second verse it says, when heaven seems beyond my reach, you still see eternity in me. You're turning ashes into art because that's just the kind of God you are. Do you ever feel like heaven is out of reach? Do you ever realize that, come to that, that you just can't do it on your own? But God put eternity in your heart. He created you with eternity in your heart, and that's what he sees. He turns our ashes, that which is burnt up, that which is broken, and he makes them beautiful into pieces of art because that's just the kind of God that he is. The chorus says, It's in the empty tomb. It's on the rugged cross. Your death-defying love is written in your scars. You'll never quit on me. You'll always hold my heart. That's just the kind of God you are. Eternity is written on your heart and God put it there. He will never quit on you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you. You are his child. And he desires you to desire him and not quit on him and just continue to call on his name because he is there and he loves you. So today, I want to encourage you to call on the name of the Lord, to choose that no matter what, I will serve God. He has written an amazing story for my life and I'm going to walk it out and fulfill the purposes and plans that he has for me. So my friends, I bless you 
in the name of the Lord. May you know the God who loves you and who created you. God bless. Thank you, Dr. Les. It was amazing to just like read and go back to those days, you know, when you uh, have like absolutely no hope uh, in, in coming out of that situation. Uh, and the thing is this, like, you know, it, what it taught me uh, more, uh, Dr. Les, is this, that, uh, you know, when you are completely out of options and you have nothing else left in your hand, you, you know, the only hope that you have is this one rope that you're going to hold on to, right? Everything else is taken down. Earlier this week, um, you know, I was preaching on Mark chapter 2. Um, it, it's about a story about a paralytic man. And um, they brought him in to, to, to get healed. Um, you know, and, and the thing is that when they came into the house, the house was completely packed and there was no room um, for, for um, that man to go inside, right? These guys were carrying all the way to this point. A lot of times, this is where many of us actually stop. When, when things are tough, when nothing is moving, we just kind of like a think, and in fact, we justify that by saying, oh, this is not God's will for me right now. So I'm just going to, you know, if it, if it was God's will, he would have actually made a room for me to actually squeeze in to that room, right? But these four men never quit on the one that they loved. And they just like went above the, the terrace and they made a hole and they brought this man in. That's the kind of like a tenacity that uh, you and I will build. Sometimes we don't even know that it is there in us to do that kind of a fight until we are faced with the situation that there is absolutely nothing that we can do. And that's when God gives us that extra energy, extra boost uh, to just like a fight this uh, battle. Over the years, I think uh, this... Um, Thing about like a not quitting and fighting for, uh, I just got built into uh, my my lifestyle, and that's why when we started Proverbs two to six, the very first time that um, we had this event uh, in in a prison, and um, we actually took the school supplies into the prison, right, and we turned the prison into Walmart, and we allowed the fathers to back uh, to pack. The, the the supplies and uh, we took them uh, to the to the uh, different cities where the children are and when we went there um, we were expecting about like a, a 80 kids to show up in Columbia South Carolina we had like a lot of uh, this is our very first event we had like everything done together um, we had like a coca-cola send the food um, we had um, Army Base Fort Jackson sent their army men on their activity bus. We had like uh, a pastors from the local churches. We had chaplains. Uh, we had the sheriff of Columbia come. We had an amazing woman, just like a Liz, who can bring heavens down with her worship was there. And uh, we had like uh, um, 20 plus volunteers were there. Uh, and... and the room was packed with people, but only four children showed up that day. And it's almost like, uh, you know, somebody put a hand through your heart and just like ripped it off and threw it and stomped on it, right? And we even sent the school supplies to those uh, families and they threw the school supplies out. And they said they don't want to do anything with this guy, right? And uh, from there to today, you know, we have in that very same city, the next year when we went there, we had 60 children show up. Then um, the following year, we had well over 100 kids standing outside the line. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because there are times it will look like you don't have any more energy to fight. It may look like you have given up or people have given up on you. It may look like that you don't have another option to go. The very fact that you are listening to Dr. Les this morning about all this, um, you know, on not quitting and fighting for, it's a, a perfect reminder 
that God is telling you that unless he says it's done, it's not done. We're going to see in the next couple of chapters how this one um, theory that I learned at that point has helped me get through the rest of my life. As, as uh, Dr. Les was going through this book, uh, she talked about like a science. It's only uh, in, in India, the people that uh, were doing science were, were like, uh, you know, very highly educated people. And it's not for normal. And you can think of like uh, India as a country. Now we have uh, 1.3 billion people, right? And uh, um, for us, education is the only way to survive. There is no NFL, there is no NBA, there is nothing that you can actually use to survive in that environment. And so between 94.500 is the maximum score you can get in school, right? Between, between 94.5 and 95, there will be 500,000 children fighting to get into science, right? And, and, and this is across the nation. That's how the country fights uh, for education. And so for me to like fail and not have enough marks to even get to the next grade was like a big deal. But God gave me this energy the next year. Um, I, I said to myself, I will not just, because I can just write that one subject and get passed on that one subject, right? And then go to the next grade. But instead, I took all my five subjects uh, totally 500 uh, uh, marks is what you can get like uh, out of that I was able to get 494 out of 500 right the reason why I'm saying all this is like uh, you know there is there is always an option there is always a door God's going to open the door I do not know what you're fighting for today I don't know whether you're fighting for your children I don't know whether you're fighting for your dignity I don't know what you're fighting for this morning God is reminding you there is going to be a day that you are going to look back at your life and know how God has brought you through this. The Bible says, my people shall not be put to shame. If there is anything that the enemy does is what he, he can put that in your mind. This morning, our prayer, uh, I'm just joining with the Dr. Liz in praying for you that you know, God will remove uh, every bit of that shame. He will restore your life. The Bible says he will restore the years the locust has chewed. He's not talking about restoring like a broken car. He's not talking about restoring a broken house. He's talking about restoring something that is completely broken over the years, and he can restore what is rightfully yours. With that said, um, we will uh, um, uh, uh, send you this uh, this week, along with this video, we have just released um, uh, a, a short film. Um, and so I'll package that, uh, you know, with this and send it to you. We will see you in the next two weeks. Until then, have an amazing rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here at Network for Encouragement. We want to remind you that Psalm 118 verse 14 says, The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Be encouraged to place your trust in the Lord. He is with you, He is for you, and He loves you.